You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Getting emotionally attached to an item of tack seems silly, but it happens to us all. Learn how one woman copes with letting go in this episode of Barn Stories. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prince, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We've searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. We've featured many essays in Barn Stories about saying goodbye to a beloved horse, but this is the first time we've shared a touching farewell to a favorite pair of chaps. This story is a reminder that when a piece of equipment has been with you for hundreds of miles of trails or countless hours of schooling, it becomes something like a keeper of memories. I had a real, oh my God, I'm old moment while listening to this when I realized that fringe chaps were the height of equestrian fashion in 1984. They're the equestrian equivalent of pinstripe jeans and shoulder pads. Has it really been that long since we wore them? I'm afraid so. (laughs) In the end, the chaps in this essay are passed along to another rider. Just like a dressage schoolmaster or a push-button pony will go on to teach another generation. And they'll form their own fond memories with them. So let's listen to Hard Bargain by Nancy Maurer and read by Taylor Autumn. Tack Swap. Rent a table to clean out your surplus tack and support the fund to build a new horse barn at the county fairgrounds. Who could resist such an enticement? I called and reserved a spot, then started going through closets and trunks. I tried to be harshly objective as I sorted through my treasured possessions. How many pairs of boots do I need? really. When was the last time those chaps saw daylight? Haven't I retired the horse I bought these for? I squeezed my surplus into the car, and when I got to the fairgrounds, the parking lot was already full with an enthusiastic crowd, pouring over tables loaded with bargains. I joined the fray, and within minutes, my own inventory started to disappear. I never realized what a pack rat I truly am, It's amazing how deeply attached we get to things. My chaps, for example. Somehow, I had acquired two different pairs of gray suede chaps with long, elegant fringe. One was brand new, the other slightly broken in. I hadn't worn them in years, but somehow they represented something more than just apparel. My bond to them was hard to define. There was some of that possessive triumph the glory of having found a good bargain and the right color and size. And then there was the symbolism. But maybe it was time to face the fact that my childhood dreams weren't coming true. And that, even in fancy chaps on a cute spotted pony, I'm never going to be a cowboy. If you have one or two horses or you have 20, 30 or more, fly predators will make the difference between heavy infested fly problem or a no-fly zone. Balding Lab fly predators catching these flies before they become an issue. Letting pragmatism take over, I dropped them both on the table, priced well below what I paid for them. It wasn't long before someone started eyeing the chaps. The fellow hovered around, trying not to look too interested then disappeared. Soon he was back, his wife hovering behind, egging him on. They're calling to you, I smiled, trying to put on my best sales girl face. But I felt my resolve weakening as he picked up the broken in pair. Think they'll fit, he asked his wife. Give him a try, I suggested, offering him my chair. He started wrapping them around a leg, and as I pointed out, he was putting them on backward, He lost his balance and sank into the chair. I suggested he start with the other leg. He was feeling a little conspicuous since his wife and I were both giving instructions and others were watching. One lady pointed out a twist in the back strap. 
He was struggling with the zipper, and I tried really hard not to give assistance that would embarrass us both. His wife fought to keep a straight face. Finally, he declared, they're a little too big, and the fringe is so long it'll get in the way. I suggested he try on the newer pair, which were slimmer with shorter fringe. I have to admit, I was suddenly relieved I'd be able to keep my beloved broken-in chaps. I could cut off the fringe, he said. I thought I was going to burst into tears. I practically begged him to try the other pair. How could he cut off the glorious fringe? But in the end, I let my head overrule my heart. I was there to pare down my collection, wasn't I? Never mind that I, too, had felt encumbered by the trailing French when I'd worn them. Finally, the man reached for his wallet. He looked happy, and I reminded myself that my precious chaps didn't need to languish in my closet. Instead, someone else could use them to spend many happy hours in the saddle, looking pretty sharp, even without the fringe. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at equusbarnstories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.